Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. We come to give God praise this morning. Amen. We come to lift up the precious and matchless name of Jesus. Amen. There's no other name by which men can be saved but by the name of Jesus. Amen. Giving honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Giving honor to our pastor, Reverend Dr. Darius Dixon Clark, and our first lady, and all of the ministers and deacons and auxiliaries of this church, the deaconesses, the missionaries, and to my lovely wife. All right. Amen. Giving honor to God. Let us look into the Lord. Dear gracious and most heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God, for what you've done, God. We thank you for all the blessings in which you've bestowed unto us this day, God, waking us up, oh God, being able to see, O oh God, being able to touch, O oh God, being able to hear, O oh God, being able to walk this morning, O oh God. Lord God, I pray, O oh Father, that as I stand behind your sacred desk, God, that you would just show yourself strong and show yourself mighty, God. Lord God, decrease me and increase you, God. Lord God, in these things I ask in Jesus' name, amen. If you will turn with me to Exodus, the 15th chapter, as it was read in your hearing, and my focus will be coming off of the 25th verse. All right. And he said, and he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and ordinance, and there he proved him. All right. I just want to leave this thought with you this morning. He made it sweet just for me. All right. All right. All right. When you look at the complexity of the scripture, we find out that the children of Israel were already brought out of Egypt in a mighty showing. They crossed the Red Sea. And so if you can imagine it, the wind blew and the sea split in half and they dried the sea, ocean floor so that they could walk on dry land. That's what the Bible says. They walked on dry land. So as they continued to cross over, they, they, they got over and they saw their enemy behind them, Pharaoh and his army and they're on, their, on their chariots, on their horses, racing behind them. And the sea closed. Ah. It started to get muddy all over again. The sea closed back up. And that's why when the Song of Moses said, horse and rider had been thrown into the sea. Yeah. Now, the, now where do the children of Israel go? Where do, what do we do? Where, where, where are we going now? How are we going to get there? Because now we left Egypt, the only home that we've known for 500 years. So how, where are we going now? Moses takes them into the wilderness, and he, the Bible says in the 22nd verse, so Moses brought Israel out of the Red Sea, so they went into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. No water. I don't know if you've ever been in a place where you don't know, one, where you're going. Two, you don't have the provisions to sustain you for a prolonged period of time. Have you ever gone without something for a prolonged period of time? You get to, be, you get to a point where you get aggravated. Well. You get stressed out. Some folks want to cuss. Some folks start fussing. Some folks start doing some things out of character. Especially if you don't give me a drink of water. Come on. I'm not going into the other side of drink, but I'm going into a drink of water. If you don't, if I go without water for a period of time, I get irritable. All right. Because that's something that my body needs to sustain life. Come on, come on. That's all right. And when they came to a place called Mara, mm. they found out that the waters was were not good to drink. It was bitter. It was stagnant. It was nasty tasting water. Well. Have you ever had a bottle of water that sat out for a while? <laughs> for take two, three days, and then you go to drink it by mistake because you forgot that you put it there and you get it and you drink it, and the water tastes kind of funky. <laughs> it's not clean, it don't taste right, it didn't taste like Poland Spring the first day you got it. Now it tastes like sewage spring because it, it, it sat for too long. So the water, is, had, the water seemed like it had either sat for too long or the water wasn't fresh, it was not moving, but they came to a place called Mara that was also known as a bitter place. Make it plain, Elder. I would like to say this now, but that you can't go to a, a place that's called bitter and expect something good to come out of it. All right. There's something about when we go to a bitter place, when we get to be bitter, and, I, and that, that, that there's nothing good that comes out of being bitter. Right. This lets us know that we always, that we, we get to a point where we don't like everything that's going to happen, but sometimes life gives us a bitter pill to swallow. And that we have to sometimes swallow it for a good result. I remember my grandmother used to give us cod liver oil and, and castor oil, and that's the nastiest 
and stuff on earth. But my grandmother used to say that it may be nasty for you now, but when you don't get a cold in December, October, November, December, January, and February, you're going to thank me. And, and, and I grew up and I, was, I, I used to catch bronchitis, so real easy. So, but, but, but my grandmother giving me that, I never got bronchitis. I didn't catch anything. So sometimes God leads us to a place that's bitter, but we can't be bitter while we get in, in a bitter place. Amen? So the people, so now we see the manifestation of bitterness. If you look at the first, if you look at Ruth, the book of Ruth, Naomi said, call me Mara. And they are which is the personal application of bitterness. Yeah. Here we see that bitterness is found in a national level or in a local level that the place was called bitter. Right. So the people began to get like the place and they took on the personal application of Mara saying, now we're, then we're, we came to bitter, now we are bitter. We're murmuring against Moses. We're murmuring against our leader. We talk about what's going on. We oftentimes don't see where the leader's going to take us, but sometimes we just have to be good followers. Amen? Amen. So now they begin to murmur against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? Moses, you see the 14th chapter of Exodus, they say, Moses, were there not enough graves in Egypt that we have to die now in the desert plain? Were there not enough graves? Weren't we being sustained good enough in Egypt that, 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 that we would be able to live and feast and eat? That's, what, that's the argument that they were bringing back up. So Moses said, before you get any further, before this argument gets any deeper, before this fire catches on and keeps on and, and grows even farther, yeah, yeah. Moses, said, Moses said, all right, he cried unto the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree. Which when it was cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Yeah. I, I just came to tell you this morning that he already made it sweet for us. <laughs> if you look at our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he, he, the Bible, in, and well, I'm going to turn there in, in, in 1 Peter 3, uh, 20, 1 Peter 2, 21 through 5 says that for even unto ye were called because Christ had also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Yeah. Who did not sin, neither was God finding found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to, to him the judgment that to him that judges righteously. Mm. Who his own self bear our sins yes, in did. our body on the tree, yeah. that we being dead in sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. Yeah. For ye were sheep gone astray, yeah. but now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of our souls. Yeah. Jesus died on a tree on a mount called Calvary. Yes, he did. The tree was cast into the waters for us where the waters were murky and deep. The songwriter said, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stayed within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me, now safe in my eye. I came to tell you, the tree was cast into the waters on Calvary. When, when, when they put the bitter nails in his hands, the tree was cast into the sea. When, when they put the bitter nails into his feet, the, that, that was a part of the bitterness on the tree. When, then when they put the bitter, the bitter so, uh, uh, staff into his side, they, that, 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 that was for us to get the joy of life. Huh? That, that water and blood came spilling out so that this way we can have the freshness, the drink of the crystal fountain of our Lord and Savior. Now is the day, now is the time that when he came there on that cross, huh? that, 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 that now we're able to say that now the water is sweet for me to drink. Huh? That now I, when I come to him, when I, pro when I profess his name, when I stand up and say that Jesus is Lord and Savior of my life, that I'm able to drink of that everlasting fountain that reminds me what he said to the woman at the well. He said that, that, I, come to, that, that I come with the water that you shall never thirst again. That now I'm never thirsty. Now I don't have to. Now I have the thirst quench again. Or I don't have nothing on my Savior. That I'm able to stand. I'm able to walk right. I'm able to talk right. All because he died on the tree on Calvary. So now I'm able to say that I serve a risen Savior. And he's in this world today. Hallelujah to God. So when we look at the scripture, we say, a tree. He showed him a tree to be cast into the waters. So that we can be able to drink. Jesus on the third day rose up with keys in his hand. Yes, he did. 
Mm. Over life, over death, hell, and the grave. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. grave, where is your hold? Mm. And death, where is your sting? Mm. He made this life so sweet for us that we will be able to walk upright. That we would have the right to the what? The other tree of life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we would have the right to, ex to, to walk up to that tree and eat of the fruit of that tree. Yeah. So that we will be able to say that we are the sons of God. Yeah. That as many as received him, he, became, he gave them power to become the sons of God. We are the sons of God. Are you the sons and daughters of yeah, God this morning? Yeah, yeah. Have, you drank enough, have you drank of that fountain this morning? Yeah. Have you drunk of his, of his sweet tasting water this morning? Yeah. The thing about it that I love is that it gets sweeter as the time goes on. Yeah. It gets sweeter. I love Jesus more now than I loved him before. I love him because he, he, every day I wake up, every day I get to see the smiling face of my wife. Every day I get up and I see the sunshine and I feel my, I feel my legs and I can, had a little pain in my back yesterday. But I'm grateful to God because now I'm able to stand up. Uh, he makes it sweeter as the days go on. That though, because what we were drinking before, that was real bitter. That stuff was that, that it was toxic. It was something that would take you out. And the more and more you drink of that toxic water, Deacon Cornigans, the more and more it takes you out. The more and more it does waste on your body. But I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Well, I'm so glad that our Lord, our God, decided to say, well, I'll send my son. I'll send him. I'll send him. I'll send him. That he might die on that tree. And that the tree might cast into the waters to make it sweet for us to drink. All right. That the tree might be cast into the waters to give us that joy, that peace huh, in the midst of sorrow. That tree would be cast into the waters to give us the peace of mind, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Yeah. That, 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 that that tree would be able to be cast into the waters that we might be able to say that we, for God I live and for God I die. That the tree will be cast into the waters that I may be able, that, that for God I live, for God I die, for peace I have, the peace of all understanding, for joy the Lord is my strength, that I'll be able to say that I have a good inheritance, that, that, that all the things that God has for me is for me, that I'll be able to say that I am the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, that I'll be able to say that God is with me, always by my side, in the front and back, up on top or underneath me, that he's always around me, that I may be able to say, because I drink of that water. I gave up the bitter water to take on the sweet water of Christ. I gave up the work, the world stuff yes. to take of that, to take, like he told the woman that put the, at the well, the water that I won't have to ever thirst again. Yes. The water that fits all of my needs. Yes. The water that I don't, even if I don't eat, the water that fills my, quenches my thirst and fills my hunger. Yes. He is the living bread. Yes, he is. And he is the everlasting spring. Yeah. That's why when blood and water came gushing out of his side, mm -hmm. it was to let us know that, that we were redeemed by the washing of the blood, yeah. but that he was the everlasting spring. Yeah. And that he, that he, because every word that Jesus and that God puts through, that God puts through cannot return back unto the yeah. void. Right. So when he told the woman at the well, yeah. had to come true. Water had to come out. Blood had to come out. Yeah. Water had to come out for our cleansing and for our, that we would be able to be washed clean. So I gave you on today that he made it sweet just for me. I don't take on the personal application of Mara any longer, but I take on the personal application of our Lord and Savior that he did it just for me. He did it just for me. Amen. He did it just for me. some bitter places in our lives that God may grow us and make us stronger. But I love the point. Don't let the bitter place 
make you bitter. Just stand on your feet today. Maybe there's someone here that's had a bitter